This video is going to be Show Me the Data Part 4. So in this video, we're going to build off of our understanding of what statistics is doing in the context of the greater uh, you know, world. What is stats doing for us in this world? And we're going to help us see this with two data sets. The first, droughts, which we've looked at before. This is a data set that records um, the time until the next rain event at the International Airport Winnipeg uh, in Canada. And then we're going to look at a data set about spam emails. So that's emails you essentially don't want, where they're trying to get you to click on some link, give away your passwords to all your private information, private websites, or let's say your bank account or something, or to give away your credit card number. So both of these data sets are going to remind us that the world of statistics involves data from different distributions, like the droughts data set is likely to have come from some sort of gamma distribution. And we're going to force the spam emails data set to look like Bernoulli data, as if the data set came from a Bernoulli distribution. Now, the trick is we claim to not know any of the specifics about the gamma or the Bernoulli distribution. For instance, our question here is going to be, what's the mean of the gamma distribution? And we will estimate the mean using only data. And here, we're going to ask, What's the probability of a spam email based on various characteristics? That is the probability P using only the data. So the key here is we're going to learn things about the distributions from which the data came using only the data itself. So here's my empty R environment, but first I'm going to show you this web page from which all our data sets will come. So I'll zoom into the URL so that you can look up this web page yourself. And I'll let you pause there and uh, get the URL on your own. And the first data set we're going to look at is named Droughts. So if I can find it, here we go. So you can read more about the droughts data set in the text file, but we are going to click on the CSV, that is a comma separated value file, which this website will put in a nice fancy form to help you see the layout, but we're just going to go to raw. You must click on this button raw first to get the appropriate URL for the data set. So copy the URL, that's control C on a Windows machine, command C on a Mac. Go back into R. Our data set is going to be named droughts. So we're going to use the function read CSV. Within quotes, it takes the URL to the data set itself. And after a little bit of time, you will have this data set read in, in R. There's two columns of data in this data set. We are not necessarily interested in year, but we are interested in length. So you can get the variable length from the data frame named droughts with the dollar sign operator. And there is all the data we have. You can see it's actually quite a bit of data. So what I'm going to do throughout this video is only print the first six elements of various vectors, this vector named length, contained within the data set droughts. I'm going to print only the first six numbers using the function head. And if we ever need to print the last six numbers, I'll use tail. So it's really easy to estimate the mean, that is an expectation of the identity function, with data alone. All you have to do is call mean on the vector of data itself. Now to help us better understand what this is doing, that mean there, I'm going to create the histogram, which we've seen in a previous video. So here is all of our data. Most of the data you can see shows up 
at less than five. In fact, the mean of two is saying most rain events happen within two days. This is literally estimating for us the time, the average time until the next rain event. So here we're getting that the average time until the next rain event is two days. And what you should really take away from this in terms of our notation for the expectation previously is that mean is analogous to the bold capital letter E, but on the data side. And within that operation goes only the data itself. So one thing we could take away from this is if you had a way to create zeros and ones, let's say you wanted to ask whether or not the um, length of time between rain events was less than two, you could get out a bunch of trues and falses. You have thus created, with this syntax here, an indicator variable. That is, this code here returns one any time a specific, specific observation is less than two, or a zero otherwise. Any time an observation is less than two, it returns true, which is essentially a one on a computer. And any time an observation is not less than two, it returns a zero. You have essentially just created an indicator variable. So you could then calculate the expectation of an indicator variable, but really what we've learned that to be is a probability. So the probability that you will get a rain event within two days is about 70%. Explore on your own with these, because you can just as easily calculate the probability that we'll get the next rain event within one day is about 60%. So based on this picture here, you should be able to answer something like, what's the approximate probability that we get a rain event within 10 days? And then you can confirm your guess using code like this. Now, the nice thing about this is we can use just the data alone to calculate or at least estimate probability statements about rain events at this specific airport. Obviously, these data don't hold for the airport at like San Francisco, but theoretically, you could collect some data from the San Francisco airport and calculate similar expectations using only the data alone. Okay, let's clear our environment here so that we can next look at the data set about emails. So I'm just going to go back to this original web page. And down at the bottom, there is a e uh, data set named Spam Base. Please read about the dataset spam base by clicking on the txt file. But for now, I'm going to tell you what we need to know about it, the dataset in this video. And I'll encourage you to explore it on your own. So I'm going to name this dataset email, read.csv, double quotes, paste in that URL that we just copied from before. And now here is an incredibly big dataset. Not huge, but it's big enough. That consists of a bunch of different columns. We're mostly going to be interested in the column named spam. So you can access it similarly from before. The vector is named spam. It lives within the data set now named email. I'm only going to print out the first six to show you that ones mean, yes, that particular observation was spam. So the first six emails in this data set were indeed spam. And the last six elements in this data set were not spam. Because our data are already zeros and ones, we essentially have Bernoulli data. And we can estimate the mean of Bernoulli data, which just is the probability p. So it looks like based on this data set, there's about a 40% chance that you observe a spam email. Let's hope that's not my inbox. So this is our estimate of the probability P that we observe a one from this Bernoulli distribution. That is the probability P that we observe a spam.
spam email. Now watch, we've learned we can manipulate probabilities, so we could just as easily calculate the probability that we don't get a spam email. And indeed, it's just one minus the probability P, or at least our estimate of it. Now, if you want to explore a little bit, you could essentially do something like this and create a new indicator variable that then asks, what's the probability we get a not spam email? And you can see it's the same thing as one minus here because the Bernoulli data only has two outcomes, one or zero. But some other fun things we can do here go like this. We can make a table of spam emails. So in this data set, there are 1,813 spam emails and 2,788 non-spam emails. From this table, we could calculate a table of proportions, which you can see is just the probability that an estimated probability that we got a spam email in this data set and the estimated probability that we get not spam email in this data set. Okay, let's start a little bit over again. The benefit of using all this extra code to calculate numbers we've already seen is something like the following. You can add in now another variable within this table. So you get like a table with two columns and two rows. And I'm going to choose the variable named WF free. Now WF stands for word frequency and free is the uh, word whose frequency we're calculating. Now, if you go look in the text file description of this data set, word frequency is actually a proportion in the data set itself, even though frequencies are normally counts. It's just a odd nuance of this particular data set. So what I'd like to do is create a Bernoulli vector, and that is a vector of zeros and ones, from this probability of the number of times the word free shows up in a particular email set. So what I'm interested in is um, specifically times when the proportion, uh, the proportion of words in the email is greater than 1%. So let's say any email that contains more than 1% of the words in the email as the word free is going to have the word free in it a lot. Now, my going assumption here is if the word free shows up in the email set, say, like 20% of the time, that is 20% of the words in a particular email are free, then that email is probably spam. They're probably trying to get you to click on some dangerous link by telling you, look, all this cool stuff you could get, it's free, free, free. So let's make a table here where now emails as zero are not spam and emails as zero are as one are spam. And if a particular email contains less than 1% of the words free, then it'll show up as false. And if it contains more than 1% of the words is free, then it'll show up as true. So this number right here is the proportion of emails that are not spam and have less than 1% of the words in it free. So 60% of emails in our data set are not spam and contain less than 1% of the words in the email of the word free. Well, follow down the column then. If there are fewer than 1% of the words free in the email set, in the emails, then chances are 60% of the time it's not spam. So free is only in the data is only in the email like one or two times, then it's probably not a spam email. And if free shows up more than one percent of the time, then um, there's a thirty three percent chance that it's not spam, that it is spam. Okay, let's try the column true. So here is. Um, true. This is for emails with more than 1% of the words free. So the probability that you have a not spam email 
and there's greater than 1% of the words are free, then there's like a 1% chance that the email is not spam. Now, if the emails contain greater than 1% of the words, being the word free, then there's five times the probability that that email is spam. So indeed, this column here is incredibly informative for us because it tells us if it contains greater than 1% of the words free, it's probably not. Uh, there's a 1% chance it's not spam. But if it contains greater than 1% uh, of the words being the word free, then there's five times the chance that that email is spam. So based on the simple statistics we know already from this class, we can figure out that the higher the frequency of the word free in an email, essentially the bigger the chances are that an email is spam. This is what it means to estimate various expectations of some distribution using only data. It's this sort of work that the world of statistics is most known for, allowing you to take a data set and learn about some interesting facts of the world, like what are the characteristics behind emails, namely how often they contain words like free, and what does that imply about how often those emails are spam? Now, in order to explore this sort of stuff, I encourage you to change this indicator variable here and even go look in the data set and see if you can change this variable here to see if there's another variable that indicates better when you have a spam email. Now, my hint to you is the function names, which you can call on the data set named email and it'll print out for you all of the variables contained in this data set. We used specifically WF free and spam, but you can see there's plenty of other variables to choose from to see which other ones might correlate with spam better. Please do take some time to explore and include a good example in your course notes.